talking about unity. Last week we talked about um, he gave us gifts. And so tonight's lesson is centered on you are part of God's plan. So we definitely want to get into the lesson and uh, to the teaching. And we want you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Your Vine Connection. And we just encourage you to share this message with a um, friend, someone who will be encouraged by it, uh, by the word. This is a, a good word. There are always good uh, teachings and lessons that come out of this. And um, so like the video teaching, share it. Uh, you never know who might be going through your news feed and who will come across this message and it be a blessing to them. Sometimes I send messages to specific people too that I know that you know it pertains to and that they will um, enjoy hearing the, the, the message. So we want you to do that and join us every Tuesday um, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you'd like to, you know, if you've got to know someone who doesn't, um, who's not on Facebook, who's not on Instagram, but they would like to dial into the Bible um, study, then please share our toll-free number with them, which is 601-901, I'm sorry, 601-909-9135. The code is 911-091. That number is 601-909-9135, and the code is 911-091. It's a toll-free number. And, you know, sometimes they're just busy moms, like one of the ladies told me today. You know, when you've got little ones or you're doing things or you're driving in the car, sometimes you just can't get on social media, but it's much easier to, to dial in. So we just appreciate those of you who are on the phone lines as well. We want you to share your comments as we go through the lesson and any prayer requests that you have as well. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, gracious God, for this day. We thank you, Father, for bringing us together. We thank you, Lord, for those who are joining us tonight for the Bible study. Lord, we pray that your word would go forth in power and might. We thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us about unity, that you're teaching us, Lord God, how to be a part of your plan, Lord, how to live our lives on purpose. Father, we pray that this word will be planted deeply in everyone's heart, Lord, so that it produces a great harvest for the kingdom and for the church body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're glad that you are here. We're excited that you're coming into our presence and able to just spend some time with us. You know, as we go through God's word, open up some things and open up our minds and our hearts and our in, enhance our knowledge of who God is, God's plan, and all those things. I want to tell y'all, thank you for joining us. I see you on Quadri Wilbur. We just thank y'all for joining us. The last few weeks as we was going in, you know, I've really been doing some deep study in the book of Ephesians. And I've been reading Ephesians over the last three, just the third week. I've only gotten to 10 verses as far as deep study and just how deep this word is. And to open up some things to us that we can get some understanding of who God is. But one of the main things, because God knows who he is, the issue is you don't know who you are. You've got to know that you're part of God's plan. you got to know that. You are not here by happenstance. You didn't just, I don't care how you got here, whether you got here by two couples who were married or people who was not married or whatever the situation I have you got here, God deemed you to be here. And because you are here, guess what? You're part of the plan. And so as we start going through God's word, we dealt with the unity of the church. What is the church? The church is God's body. This is Jesus Christ, the body. You are the body of the, you are, you are, you are the incarnation of Christ upon the earth. Everything he does, he does it through one of us as believers. That's why he put his spirit in us so that he can guide us by his spirit. And so that's why it's so important that you know who you are in Christ. I want you to know who you are. So the first week we dealt with, uh, we dealt with uh, unity in the church. The second week we dealt with gifts. That was last week, he gave us gifts. This 
this week we are going to deal with something just, I mean, just even deeper. And that is you're part of the plan. It's very important that you understand that. So let's read some words so we can get to dig in and see what's going on here. We're going to read in the book of Ephesians. It's in the New Testament. And we're going to start out in verse 8. Look what it says. I'm going to read through it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he led captives in his, in his train and gave gift to men. Verse 9 says, what does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. What Paul is doing is, he's writing this letter to the people of Ephesus, the Ephesian church. And he's giving them some understanding of who Jesus is and how Jesus came into this. And so Paul started this, this lesson, out, and, and, and I like the way he does it because he explains it very well. But what he did first, he, he quoted some scriptures. And the scriptures that he quoted came from Psalm 68. And so this is what it says in Psalm 68. Look what it says here. He said, this is why it says. Paul said, this is what that message in Psalm 68 means. Look what it says. When he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. Now let's explain that what's, what's happening. During that time, the context of the story is David had went out to battle. And as he went out to battle, he went on a high place. And he was very, he was victorious. And he, the people was captive. And guess what David did? He led them who was captive and gave them gifts. So not only what he's talking about is as the general, which David was the king, he went to get the people and he brought the people back. And guess what he did? He gave the people gifts. What did Jesus Christ did? That is what the gospel is. The gospel comes from a Greek word, which is euangelion. That means that the general went out to war, went out to battle, and as he went out to battle, guess what he did? He was victorious, and he brought the spoils of the battle back and shared with the people. That's what he did. And so, look what that's Paul said. So verse 9, Paul comes and he explains what he's saying. Look what he said. What does he ascended means except that he also descended to the lower earthly region? I want to give you some definition. I'm big on definition because I want you to understand what I'm saying. Ascended. What does ascended mean? To move upward. One example is the balloon did what happened? Ascended. That's what it means. To move upward. Now, what does descended mean? To, to descend. That is to pass from a higher place and to come down to a lower place. So now let's go and see what Paul explains. So what Paul says here is, he explains, what does he who what? Moved up. So in order for it to move up, he ascended means that he also descended. To the lower region. Paul said for him to move up, there had to be a time when he moved down. Let, let's go into that. So Paul said he moved up. He was on earth. How did he get on earth? He came from heaven. He moved down. So when he descended, God saw the situation in which the world was in. He saw our condition. He saw the condition of the world. The son said to the father, I can go down and we can fix this. So guess what? He was already up there, so he moved down. I want to read it from another translation. We're going to go from the Passion Translation and see what it says. The Passion Translation said, He ascended, meaning that he returned to heaven. What does it mean, return?
return. If he returns somewhere, guess what? That means you were there before. If I returned home, that means I was home before. And so what he's saying is, he ascended means that he returned to heaven after he had first descended. Me he came to earth. That's what Jesus did. We're getting ready to celebrate some of y'all favorite holidays. And guess what that is? That's when we celebrate as Christians is when he came to earth. That's how he descended. He came to earth. And so this translation says that after he had first descended from the heights of heaven, even descended as far as the lowest part of the earth, now, some people say he went to hell and all those things. That's a little spooky, you understand. But that's what some say in, you know, some of the translations, some of the commentaries that I've read. I don't get that out of what I'm reading here. He's saying that he came to earth. But let's go a little bit further. Verse 10 said, the same one who descended is also the one who ascended above the heights of heaven. He's talking about Jesus. The same one who came down is the same one who went up. Why did he? Why would he do that? That's what. I, that's the question of the night. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Well, because God so loved the world that He gave His Son mm -hmm. so that we could have eternal life. Mm -hmm. So He came down, mm -hmm. and that is good. So that he can have eternal life. But, but guess what else? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see as we read. He did it in the rest part of verse says, In order to begin the restoration and the fulfillment of all things. That's why he did it. He did it so that he can begin the restoration. What is the restoration? To restore. To restore God upon the earth. That's the part of the plan that you are. You are part of the restoration plan. I want to skip down to a, 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 a place because I don't want it. Just let me do it and, we, and I explain. So look what it says here. And we're in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. So in, in, in latter part of Ephesians 4.10, he said, in order to fill the whole universe. How can one man, Jesus Christ, fill the whole universe? It is impossible for a physical man to fulfill the whole universe. And so he said, that's why Paul said, that's why he came, so that he can, fulfill, he can fill the whole universe. I want to go down a little bit further. I want us to skip down because we're going to come back to this. I want you to read down, to, I want you to go to verse 13. That's Ephesians 4, verse 13. And look what it says. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, look what it says, and become mature, look what it says, attaining to the whole, whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's why he came. So he came to fulfill the universe, to fill, to fill the whole universe with his glory, to fill the whole universe with the knowledge of who God is. To fill the whole universe with the Spirit of God. And so this word is saying is, Paul said, this is why he came. So he can fill the whole universe because there was such a disruption and a disturbance when the enemy took over the universe. God never left his plan. You were always part of God's plan. I want you to understand that. God's plan never ceased. Even though the enemy got involved and did all those stay here, Christ always knew that he was going to restore it. And because he did that, Paul is giving these guys a great explanation that he who descended and is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Let's go down to verse 11. How is it then that he filled the whole universe with his glory and with his knowledge, with who he is? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Verse 11 says, 
It was he. Who was he? The one who's going to fill the whole universe, which is Jesus Christ. It, it, it was he who gave Psalms to be what? Apostles. That is the beginning. We got to break this down so we can get an understanding. This is why that we have to make certain that we are disciples, that we are, are ministered to, that we have accountability, that we have people who love us, people who are going to preach and speak the truth, because it's so relevant that you can't get it on your own. Whether you're in a church, whether you listen to ministry, however you get in the word of God and you are yielding your life to be used of God and to be accessible to God is very important. And because of that, guess what it says? That it was he who gave some to be apostles. Let's deal with this apostles. Who were the apostles? The disciples were the apostles. So when God, when Jesus started out in this ministry, he knew that he had some people who did not know who he was. They did not know the full plan. I often ask the question, if you're going to start a religious movement, why didn't you start with religious people? That, that, that's, that, 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 all, that didn't make sense to me. Because none of them was priests. None of them were Levites. None of them was, was, was a Pharisee. None of them was any of those things of the first 12. Paul was, but the first 12 was not. How is it that you can bring and start a ministry that Jesus Christ had did when he was 30 years old and he got all of these misfits from different aspects of life? Why did he, why did he do that? He did it for the very reason is he knew he can pull himself into them. They're called discipleship. They started out as students. They didn't know a thing. They heard of something. They were looking for something, but they knew that it was not there. Jesus had to convince them of who he was because Peter asked the question. I mean, Jesus asked, asked them, asked Peter the question. Who do people say I am? And Peter went through his thing and said, some say you this and some say you that. Then he came back and asked the question. He said, now who do you say I am? See, he had to convince them of who he was. I want to do something here. I wasn't, wasn't part of my, my, my uh, lesson, but I think that we need to, to look at this so that we can be encouraged. Because these are the same people who, who deny Christ. So I want us to do this. I want us to go to his prayer. Okay. Hey, Brother Him, glad you joined us. But I want us to go to his prayer. Let's see his prayer. Look what he says here. Verse, this is the book of John. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 17. And look what he says. This is what Jesus, he, he's talking to the Father. Look what he says to the Father. He said, Father, the time has come your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you, that you have given him. Look at verse 3 said. Now this eternal life that they may know you. That was part of his plan. He could not start with apostles who did not know him. Very important. And so it says here, now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God. That's very important. There ain't no other God. This is the only true God. Look what else it said. And Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Now we ask, why did he come from heaven to earth? He's telling us here why he came. He's reporting back to the Father. Look what else he said in verse 4. I have brought you glory on earth. That's one reason why he came. He brought the glory of the Father well on earth by completing the works. That's how come it's so important that we complete and know and acknowledge the work that God has for us. You are not finished until you complete the work. 
Now let me tell you something. A lot of times people don't realize you can die in incomplete work. I would hate to leave here and not complete the work. So he says here, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you have gave me to do. Verse 5. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence. Now he's talking about going back. He said, glorify me in your presence with the glory, what glory? That I had with you when? Before the world began. Before he even came upon her, he said, bring me back to where I came from. This is teaching. Mm -hmm. I want you to get an understanding. I want you to know. Look what she said in verse 6. Now we're going to deal with the apostles and all those guys next week, but I just want to give you a tidbit to understand. Look what else he said. Verse 6 said, this is uh, John 17, verse 6. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. He did not say out of the church. He did not say out of the temple. He did not say out of Israel. He said those whom you have given me out of the world. He said that I have revealed you. That's what part of his work was to show them who God is. This is my job. This is Henry Joseph's job. Just to show y'all who God is. That's what he's called us to do. So that you can grow up and become that person, that individual who God has called you to be. So he says that I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. Look what he said. They were yours. We have to understand this ministers. That they are not ours. They are God. He had ordained them. He placed us in a position to be influential, to help them to mature, but they are not ours. And so he says here, they were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. They have obeyed your word. Look what else he said, verse 7, this is very important. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. It takes some growth to understand that. So he's explaining this so they can get a great understanding. Verse 8 says, For I gave them, what? The words you gave me. And they accepted them. They accepted them. That is why they were able to go forth even after Peter denied. After this, Peter had denied them. After that, he had left, and, and they abandoned him, went back to their old jobs. But he had planted some seeds in them that had taken root that they could not deny. And he was comfortable enough to leave them at that time because he knew his time on earth was done. I have, I have gave them your word. Now they know that I came from you, and they know who you are. And so look what he said. They knew with certainty that I came from you. And they believed that you sent me. That's what we have to believe. That he came from the Father. The word that the Father gave him, he gave to us. And we have to understand that he sent them. Sent, they sent him. Look what he said. Look what he says. I pray for them. In the book of Romans chapter 8, he talked about how the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ intercede for us. Because he's given us a job to do. So he said, I have prayed for them. I'm not praying for the world. But for those you have given me, for they are yours. I'm praying for them. Cover them in prayer. I want you to take care of them, Father. Look what it said, verse 10. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. He's talking about the relationship between he and the Father. Everything the Father had, Jesus said, is mine, and all that I have is yours. Then he says, and glory has come to me through them. These are the 
the same individual that he saw, Christ knew when he met them that these were the twelve. When those other disciples he had with him left him, he asked the twelve, so do you want to leave and go also? And they spoke up. They said, look, where could we go? You carry the word of life. I believe in what you're saying. I have totally bought in. People, until you buy in, you always struggle. You got to have buy-in in who Jesus Christ is. Get rid of the doubt. You got to buy in. And so he says here, he said, and glory has come to me through them, verse 11 said, I will remain in the world no longer. Man, now he's coming to a place of getting an understanding that he's getting ready to leave here. And so he said, I will not remain in the longer, but they are still in the world. And because they are here, guess what they are doing? They are learning. They have learned. And they are going to be me. They're going to carry out the fullness of Christ, of, of, of God. The same thing he was talking about in Ephesians, these are the one. And guess what? You are the one. You are part of the plan. And so he says here, I am, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are in the world. Look what he said. And I am coming to you. Christ said, I'm coming back home. Holy Father, look what he said. Protect them by the power of your name. God's name is all powerful. Yes, it is. He said, protect them by the power of your name. And look what else he said. The name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. Now we're coming back to what we are talking about unity. You understand? You're part of the plan. All of you are part of the plan. Now we're coming back to what they're talking about, unity. <clears throat> so this is what pa Paul started when he said that I am part, you all are part, you all are one, you have different members, different talents, different gifts, but guess what? You are part of the plan. You are unified. And so Christ is making a declaration here. He said, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. <coughs> there is no schism in Christ. There should be no division in the body. We should be one as he is one, because guess what? He is not divided. And we have to understand that. And then we come to a close when he says here, that's John 17, verse 12. While I was with them, look what he's talking about. I protected them, and I kept them safe by the name you gave me. He took it serious. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture may be fulfilled. And that's talking about Judas. People, I want you to understand and to know that God has always had a plan. This is not evolution. This is part of God's plan. When you gave your heart to God, you joined God's plan. The Holy Spirit convicted you. He brought you in. No one coming to the Father except through the Son or that the Spirit draw him. When he drew you in, he was bringing you in, letting you know that you're part of the plan. He was bringing you in for a reason. So I want you to take your salvation serious. But don't stop at salvation. I want you to stir up the ministry on the inside of you. And when I say ministry, I'm not talking about pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher, or apostle. I'm not talking about any of those. I'm talking about what the gift that God has given you, whether you are a mechanic, whether you are a janitor, whether you are a computer tech, whatever you are, do it to the utmost and know that you are part of God's plan in whatever avenue you're working in. You are part of the plan. Everybody can't be a preacher. 
like everybody can't be a mechanic. You are part of God's plan. It is the love of Christ that is in you that you can minister to people while you changing their oil. That's the love of Christ in you. If you're a salesperson, it's the love of Christ that's in you. I want you to be comfortable with who you are. But I want you to be comfortable who you are in Christ. So that you don't have to go chasing who somebody else is. You be comfortable with who he called you to be. Because you would never be maximize your potential if you're trying to be who somebody else is. I want you to grasp this. Because you're a part of God's plan. So next week we're going to go a little bit further. And we're going to see how God, Jesus, has set these offices up. Because he knew that he needed all of these people to mature us for the work of service. And so he poured into apostles, to the apostles, he poured into the prophets, he poured into the teachers, evangelists, and all of those people. But he had to start with the twelve. And also that it can point them down to us. And that's how the church grew, and that's why we are who we are now. See how God's plan has worked? Now we are worldwide. The glory of God is throughout the world. And he wants more of it. But he wants you to be a part of it. I just want to thank you for joining us. Anything you want to add? Oh, yes. So, uh, well, not to add, but just, you know, I just like how you broke it down to explaining you know, how we are um, in God's plan and that he, uh, students, that he mm -hmm. started with the 12 mm -hmm. disciples, they were students. Mm -hmm. So he spent those three years with him. He could have done, and last week you talked about this, that how even good things or deeds that we could be doing can be a distraction to our purpose. Mm -hmm. Jesus was focused. He was what we would call intentional. To he could have done any number of things and met all kinds of needs, and he did meet needs, but he focused on teaching those disciples so that that scripture could be fulfilled. That I told them who you are, mm -hmm. right? And then he could then ask them, Who do you say I am? You have been with me. So now who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. Because for these three years, I've been telling you and I've been showing you. And that was that was sort of like a test, mm -hmm. right? For the mm -hmm. students, for them to know, hey, do you know who I am? Because that was his goal. And that was just so great, honey. And for us to just be um, encouraged to do what we do right where we are. Because mm -hmm. Jesus asked him a question. He said, now do you believe? Yeah. And they said, now we believe. Mm -hmm. And that's when he went to the Father. Yeah. His work was done. His work was done. His work was done. Amen. You understand? His work was done. Now do you believe? Yeah. Now do you believe? Now I believe. I'm bought in. Amen. I'm bought in. And I'm, 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 you know, just in my own personal, you know, walk, I, it is becoming just more clear to me what my purpose is, what I am called to do, and to take it more seriously, to really be intentional, to recognize that the day is not long. It's not. The day is short. Right. Time is going by faster. And so um, we've got to be about, you know, our Father's business. And I, I, like you said, you know, we don't want to leave here with an incomplete mission. Oh and that Both was mission. good, you yeah. know, to complete what Jesus what God gave us to do. Because right. Jesus fulfilled his work. So now we have to fulfill our work. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Amen. So next week, those gifts that you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, apostles, teachers, pastors, evangelists, that's part of what the fivefold that ministry. Exactly what it so is. if you have ever kind of wanted to know, you've heard that term, but you're like, well, what is that? So next week, you have to come back so yep. we can find out more about the five-fold ministry and kind of get a better understanding. And what their functions that. are, you understand, how, how they help to mature the church, you see. See, 
God's plan was so intentional. He didn't leave anything out. He didn't leave nothing out for chance. He called people to do, to grow us up. He put gifts in people to grow us up so that our gifts can grow. He didn't leave it to chance. So they're not the only ones with gifts. No, they're not. Nor are they the only ones with work to do. They, they are not. They are not. He okay. said he gave them so that he can put us where we need to be. Yeah. That's why. To equip the To saints. equip us. Right. Right. Yeah, that's why. That's the gift of the, So to equip us so, for the work of service. Now, isn't that what, so was Jesus all those things? Because that's what he did. He equipped he did the all. apostles. He did them all. Right. He, he had them all. He had all gifts. He had all of the mm -hmm. gifts. Right. But then he gave those gifts to individual men so that collectively they could equip the body. That's, that's the purpose of it. That's my job. That's any minister's job. Mm -hmm. Is to equip you, to give you the confidence to go forth in ministry. To go forth in life. Not right. just, because when we talk about ministry, right. in this country, see, in, in America, we got Department of Labor, Department of all those things. In other countries, they got Ministry of Labor. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so the word ministry means to help. These are the departments of help. So whatever your help is, guess what? That's your ministry. Yeah. So you can transition ministry and help together. Yeah. They interchange. Right. So don't get stuck when you hear the word minister, ministry mm -hmm. that we were talking about you preaching. Right. Or you singing in the choir. Or you holding the door and people coming to the church. You're ushering. No, it's, sometimes it's none of those things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may, have, you may be a, a waiter. Sometimes you may be a bank president. Whatever you, God puts you in, he wants you to show the people his glory throughout the world. And you may have the gift of encouragement. Whatever so whatever you, you are, whatever your vocation is, you, and I know someone like that who has the, um, the gift of encouragement. And what a wonderful joy that is. So whatever our gift is, Peace. it's a blessing it to others. To the body. You, mm -hmm, when you give it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's close that for being to 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we want to pray. Yeah, we just want to thank y'all. Father, we just thank you, God, yes, for the Lord. opportunity, Lord God, to share your word with your people. Father, your spirit is so powerful, Lord God. You are so tangible. You are so loving. Yes. And we just love to be in your presence. We love to be in your presence, the presence of your word, the presence of your people. Lord God, we just pray and ask that you continue to bless us, continue yes. to reveal yourself to us. Lord God, give us the strength, the power, the discernment. Lord God, encourage us, Lord God. To continue to grow in you and to pour our lives out so that we can be a blessing to the body. We thank you in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, wait. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're not quite done yet. Um, so we want to um, just uh, invite you to share this message, this video teaching. Go ahead and like it if you haven't liked it. And we so much appreciate your comments, your prayers. You know, and any feedback that you want to share with uh, Pastor Trey, this message really resonated with you, then share that. You know, if you really bought in, then, you know, do use that as an affirmation. And we just appreciate that so much. If you would also, we want to invite you to mark your calendars for Saturday, January 11th. So we will be having, your Vine Connection Ministry will have a night of ministry on Saturday, January 11th in Clinton, Mississippi. So mark your calendars so that you can come and join us and, and get here. We would love to have you to join us uh, for this night of ministry. It's, it's sort of the launch of what we'll be doing in 2020. And we're excited about that. We're happy to be here where we can pour out and do the, have the Bible studies on Tuesday nights. But there's so much more that we already do. But we're excited to add this right. as a part of the, the ministry and going out into the community. We'll be doing some outreach things, uh, more of that for in the coming month. So mark your calendar for that, and then also if you would like to support the work that we are doing, and also as well as the launch, then you can send uh, donations to our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 311, Clinton, Mississippi, 39060. Your Vine Connection Ministry, P.O. Box 311, Clinton, Mississippi, 39060. Or if you have PayPal, you can give through PayPal, YVC. Ministry. 
YBC Ministry, paypal.me slash YBC Ministry. Well, thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. We love you. Be blessed. Have a good night. Bye-bye.